this so as you know it's complete i am nine days post delivery um please make sure you what like and subscribe um i just need to kind of sort of vent a little and just tell my birth story and what happened and at first we were talking about having um waiting for Knox to come i mean 37 weeks and he came at 26 weeks which was unexpected but at the same time um saved my life so let's just get into the story on the 17th my best friend came over hey jen and we chatted she didn't leave till like around midnight almost and um at that time i was so into red jello so, so I had about two or three jellos at around around 11:30 while she was still here. Um, like I like to say, I murked those jellos. So anyway, so I ate the jellos. I went to bed. She left. I went to bed, and around 4:30 in the morning, I started getting this indigestion, and uh, it was a pain. I I've had heartburn and suggestion, but it was it was knocking. It was and it wasn't contractions. I wasn't contracting and knock was okay, but I was in pain. And so the nurse gave me she gave me my Lanta, some Pepsi, I had some Tums in the course of like an hour and none of that worked. And so at this point, um, my blood pressure is rising, right? Because I'm in pain. But um I don't think the pain was okay enough to to say okay she's in pain she has high blood pressure my blood pressure was 162 over 109 and that's generally high so I think this was around 8 o'clock so I called my mom <laughs> I called mom at 8 o'clock and I said they are taking me back my doctor came in she said we're delivering and honestly guys i was in so much pain i was like do it and it's crazy because i wasn't contracting and i wasn't ready for pregnancy, like ready to give birth but that pain was just so bad that i was like i don't care what you do so god must have had me covered because i was abnormally calm well i'm a calm person really kind of sweet but i was that type of calm like they were poking me with IVs and taking blood and I didn't care and I guess like when you're in pain you kind of don't feel anything but I was I didn't even feel like I was near death I just felt like stop this ball from like my chest just get it out so I called mom at 8 o'clock she made it here by 9 o'clock well no yeah I called her at 8 I want to say she zoom zoom that she got here by 8 o'clock but I don't know but she got here in record time so by nine o'clock i was back in the or honey let me tell you something about this or i'm at a very good hospital i'm at ut southwest in here in dallas and it is a beautiful beautiful hospital so beautiful so i go back to the or and mind you i'm calm no drugs no the drugs have been given at this point and um and I felt like I was walking into heaven because it, the lights were so bright. It was so cold in there. And I, it was like, I don't even know how to explain it. Like, God was just like, welcome to your heart. <laughs> I was like, why is it so bright? I know they need to see, but it was bright and it was cold. And I just was like, okay, taking this in. So I have been petrified petrified of c-sections not c-sections but epidurals since i um used to work in the navy um and i used to work on labor and delivery and so i used to assist the doctors in um administering epidural and i just was like yeah, i'm never ever getting a epidural because ain't anything about go on my back it's not happening so anyway at this point i'm in so much pain i'm like where's the epidural and mind you, I'm not in any labor pain. I'm just in having pain in my stomach. Well, the top of my stomach, in between my chest and stomach. And I'm like, uh, where did Epidura? Like, let's let's make this happen, Captain. 
Captain <laughs> Captain Sinatra Cole was amazing. I didn't even the only thing I felt was the the light cane which You just can't help yourself from singing from lidocaine. Lidocaine takes the bigger pain away, but it is a minute pain. And you've been, you know, um, right over your mouth. And you know how it feels, but it was in my back. So I screamed on that one because it didn't feel good. So I, you know, had to usa, namaha, 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 shuksha. Had to pull a little anime wallace on that. And eventually, like, I would say one minute to two, I was numb. Well, man, anyway. <laughs> so, um, got the I got the epidural when he stuck the needle through to numb me. I didn't feel it. I felt pressure, and it just felt like somebody was stepping on my back a little bit. So, if you're worried about epidurals, don't be. It really is just a pinch, and then it's done. And you have to be in the ugly position like Quasimodo. You have to be like this and then tell you to relax and you're just like, how the F am I going to relax if you're sticking a needle in my spine? But you know what? I'm going to let you make it because I'm in so much pain. So, uh, make sure you have, practice some relaxing techniques. I'm numb, getting numb at this point. Legs just, oh. I don't know if y'all have ever touched a dummy, but like, or rubber, like a big slab of rubber, like a dummy. My legs look like rubber. Like I couldn't feel them, and the way they were picking them up was just like dead phalange. Oh no, it was. It was. I don't know what this was. It was really weird. Uh, I again, I was calm, but in my head, I was like, why my legs look like that? Like, like, like a play doll, but the expensive kind. <laughs> So, overall, the surgery went great. Um, I didn't feel a darn thing, which was one of my biggest fears, too, that I was going to be like that movie, Awake, and feel everything and can't say anything, even though I was awake. Anyway, don't judge me. Things started to get a little complicated. And why? It's because this thing right here, honey, the child, that thing was... Hmm, in me or growing for a long time oh that's just my son's milk and so it was he, I, I felt heavy and i was just like they, they told me like oh he only weighs a pound and i'm just like listen this son this man does not lay i mean weigh a pound he has to weigh way more than a pound because my stomach was so heavy and now that i see this this is the reason why it was so heavy so things got complicated because they couldn't get knocked out because the fibroid was so big. So, uh, it was basically Knox against fibroid. Fibroid won, but, but Knox survived. You know, he lived to fight another day. Um, so he, he came out, he was all bruised because they couldn't really get him out successfully because the fibroid was so big. So, they delivered him and I got to just see him for a second. They didn't show me him, I just had to bend my head back and just kind of look for him. And, he was so blue and gray and he didn't have all that cheese. I mean, he didn't have a lot of time to cook. So he didn't, he wasn't all dirty and nasty and stinky like newborns. Not saying that your baby is going to be stinky, but it didn't really smell that great. After he was delivered at 1024 on the 18th, um, I kind of was like, okay, we, we good. So we back up. Let's go. I want to hold my son. So uh, at that point, my blood pressure started to drop just a little bit at this point because that fibroid was has a very big blood supply couldn't sew me back up so that's why they had to remove it I, the fibroid was so big that they couldn't put my belly back together and I'm glad they did because honey I'm trying to be snatched and I wasn't trying to be you know walking around with no big fibroid in my tummy and can't and can't lose weight because my fibroid is so big and no, no, no. I'm glad they took it out but I almost died when they took it out and I'm not trying to be dramatic but I did lose um, over two liters of blood and like I said my blood pressure was just dropping but I was still coherent so it wasn't it wasn't like crash cart dying but I could have died because I had lost so much blood so we had to hurry up and get a blood, tra blood transfusion and meanwhile all of this is happening my mom is right there <sighs> let me tell you about this woman I, that's a whole nother video but anyway 
she was right there. She wasn't freaking out, thank God, because I thought she was going to be the freak out mom because she's a ch -ch 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 helicopter mom. Love you, mama. I do. She's a helicopter mom. Anyway, um, so I could tell something was happening because the doctors were scrambling. They were moving, and uh, Colt, which is um, the one who gave me my epidural, he just kept talking. He's like, okay, this is what's happening. You're about to get a blood transfusion. Um, uh, let's stay calm. Everything's okay. We get everything handled. And honestly, he uh, after Knox was born, they gave me Versed, which is an anti is an anxiety medication. And I knocked out. Like I was in and out. I was asleep. And I wake up and I'm like, what's happening? And mom's like, nothing. And I'm like, oh, it's so cold. And I was. <laughs> Thank God, I was just in and out, so I really wasn't freaking out that I was losing so much blood, and my mom didn't freak out at all. She, I think we just trusted our doctors, and they were, you know, looking out for us and handling us, so, I don't know, it was, I, it was, my experience was scary, it was painful, but I, not, not labor pain, and I, I can't, I cannot comment on labor pain, and I don't, I don't never want to know what labor pain is, and I'm so sorry, women out there who go, that have labor pain. <laughs> But I can't comment on it, but I did have a pain and what eventually we had labs drawn and my liver enzymes were attacking me. So that is a symptom of preeclampsia um, when your liver and kidney just start acting up. And basically my liver was attacking me. So that's what caused the pain. I thought it was the jello and I still think it's the jello. So I haven't eaten jello since he's been born. And I don't want to eat jello and then put it in my boob and then my boob, then my boob milk goes to him and then he has a liver. I don't know. It's definitely something that I'm working through. I am trying to tell myself that it's not that bad, but jello is just not my friend right now. And I love jello. I don't give a damn how old I am. I love jello. Um, his milk is out. Lara should be coming in here so Here's Lara. I don't know. She's gonna make me turn off the camera. You want me to turn off the camera? No, you okay. want me to turn off the okay. camera. Okay. This is Lara, guys. She's awesome. Can I leave? Yeah, you surely okay. can. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, so like I said, I don't eat Jello because I feel like the Jello is the reason why my liver enzymes started attacking me. So I don't eat Jello. So after I was closed and done, I came back full recovery. Um, it was a it was a C-section with a myomectomy, and that myomectomy is the fibroid being removed. Um, I had one full day of rest, and I was on the ground walking. I needed to see my son. I wasn't about to be in the bed healing like some wacky while my son is getting poking probes and all that good stuff. So overall, the whole experience was very scary, but really, really good because I'm at a very good hospital. Thank God. Um, I think my mom kind of got the worst part of it more than me because I'm her child so I was just like hey I don't care just save him I don't care about me but you know on my mom's side she's like uh I don't know him save my child <laughs> so, so it's a, it's a, it was a good experience and I like that I'm able to share with you guys and you know tell my story this is helping me cope and understand what happened and you know, and that'll be next next time. But you have a lot of self blame. But we'll talk about that later. This is all about the birth story. So Knox was born one pound thirteen ounces, and was born at ten twenty four on the eighteenth of September. So I have a little Virgo. He um, is fourteen inches long, so he's a long baby. I'm six, five nine, and his dad is six two, so. I think he's gonna be a tall baby. His grandpa is like six one. His grandma is like five nine. His great grandma is like oh my. His grandma is like five seven. His great grandma is five nine. She's a tall one. So he's gonna be a long baby. Um, but he's here in the NICU. Uh, he is doing well. I can go on and on on how well he's doing. Um, but overall, he's healthy. He's alive. He's in there kicking. I'll shoot a little shot over there of him. Say hi, Knox. Say hey to the world. You gonna open your eyes? No, no. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're not gonna show you little Dingleberry. <laughs> Keep it PG-13, kid.
Gotta wake up for mommy. No. Oh, no, I can't even touch my own son. Look. He's gonna be hell to sleep with. Ugh. Knox, wake up. Show everybody those pretty baby eyes. No. He is very temperamental. He doesn't like to be touched. He doesn't, he doesn't like to be moved. He just wants to lay how he lay. He's a character already. Um, sorry it took me so long to tell this story, but there's a lot going on in this little world of mine. So just stay tuned. Thank you for watching this video. Again, make sure you like and subscribe. Subscribe and like. And I'll see you next week.